I know that guys love playing with their knob, but like the saying goes, play with it too many times and you could break it. Or was it you'll go blind? Hmm. Hey folks, we're back again with another video and today we're going to be working on a Fox Float DPS Evol Performance Series Rear Shock. So I've done a video on a shock similar to this one. This is a 2021. It's going to be very similar to the one I've done before, but this one actually has a couple of issues. And the reason I'm making this video is because I've been asked many questions as far as when knobs don't work, can we fix them? How do I fix them basically? So that's what we're going to do in this video. This shock over here belongs to one of our local uh, trail maintainers. And ultimately he was saying that, you know, his knobs are stuck, they don't move, and oil was leaking out of the knobs. I'm not 100% sure what the knob problem is, though he did say that this bike did come off a Yeti 115, and when he first got the bike, the knob was vertical, straight up here. And that's how it would work. And that doesn't seem right to me. I've always seen DPSs with the knobs facing down this way, and then you just put them fully open or fully locked or leave them in the middle for pedal position, basically, right? So what we are going to do is completely service this shock. I have no idea when the last time it was serviced or if it was ever serviced, but we are going to try and fix the problem for him in order for him to get back on the trails. And ultimately, for any of you guys that have a similar problem, this video will give you an idea how to fix it all right so let's go into the tools and parts needed for the job as for tools here are the tools needed to service a dps shock i'm going to go over them in the order that i will be using each and every one of these tools so if you lay them out in this order it'll make your life a lot easier all right so for starters the most important tool that we need to have safety glasses make sure you wear glasses we're dealing with pressures in here protect your eyes okay do not forget your glasses from there we're going to need a vise and flat soft jaws so we can mount the shock and then when we mount the shock we're going to take our air pump paper and pen in order to write down the settings air pressures and rebound settings then we're going to want to remove the can if you can't do it by hand you're going to need a strap wrench in order to safely remove the can. So from there, we're going to take out the Delrin ball in order to release the air pressure from the IFP chamber. You could try it with just a pick, but even easier, if you have a small drill bit, drill a hole in the ball and use a pick to remove the Delrin ball. Once the Delrin ball is removed, we are going to take a 5 30 seconds Allen and slowly let out the oil, uh, the gas from the IFP chamber. And then from there, we're going to take the shock. We're going to invert it straight up. We're going to use a 5 64th Allen in order to remove the bleed screw. And once we remove the bleed screw, underneath it will be a steel ball and a magnet will help you take out that ball. Next step is going to be to use a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch wrench, Nipex, plier, channel lock, in order to separate the damper body from the top half of the shock and later on when we torque it all back down together we're going to need a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch crow's foot in order to torque it all back down if you don't have any of these other tools crow's feet are the way to go because we could unscrew and torque back down when we are done right so at that point we have separated the damper body we're going to take a pan and pour the oil in it so next step is going to be to work on the ifp first we need to remove the ifp any air will get the IFP out of the damper body. So we're going to change the seal on the IFP, then we're going to put it back in, and to put it back in we have to set it to a specific depth. You could use an IFP depth tool or you could use a caliper. I use both in order to make sure that my IFP depth tool uh, is perfectly set to where that IFP needs to be. Personally, I like this Fox tool. I think it's a great IFP depth tool, right? So then we're going to work on the top half of the shock. First, we're going to have to take out the piston. To do that, these are two special tools from Fox in order to be able to remove the two uh, bolts or nuts, I should say, that hold down the piston assembly to the main shaft, okay? Before, when we take out the piston, we want to be super safe with it. We don't want to, you know, mess up our shim. So we're going to use either a zip tie or a tie wrap in order to safely take out the entire assembly, okay? So now we removed everything from the top half of the shock. Now we're going to have to remove the shaft from the eyelet itself. For that, we're going to need another soft jaw, nine millimeter. 
we're gonna need heat to loosen up the Loctite red that's already in there. And then I have an eyelet removal tool. Ultimately, you could use, again, a Nipex, a, uh, a wrench, anything depending on the size or the width of whatever your shock has as far as shock mounting hardware. I'm gonna remove the shock mounting hardware, which allows me to use this tool. Okay, so now we remove the shaft. So first, what we're probably going to do, since we're servicing the shock, we are going to change the seals in the shaft and the metering rod. For that, you're going to need a needle and a skewer, a wooden skewer, comes in real handy for that, putting the seals back in those little rods. They're very small seals and very tight spaces, okay? So from there, and I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with the knobs, but ultimately, to remove the knobs, we need a 1.5 millimeter Allen to remove the knobs, okay? So then we fixed all that. We put the eyelet back, we connect the eyelet back to the shaft. We're gonna need Loctite Red to do that, okay? So then we're gonna assemble the whole piston assembly again, and we are going to test it. This is optional when you do a service. In this case, I'm not sure what's happening in there with the knobs, so I am definitely gonna test it. This is a shock mount for any gauge or any dial that will allow us to test the tolerances as far as how far up the lifting plate goes when going from the firm to the pedal position, right? So now we're gonna connect the top half to the damper body, put the oil in it, bleed it, so on and so forth, and it's time to fill up the IFP chamber again. Now you got two options over here. You can go nitrogen system, or you could go with needles, basically. If you go with needles and a hand pump, you need a high pressure hand pump because we need to go to 500 PSI with a DPS and ultimately make sure you have extra needles. I highly recommend at least four or five of them hanging around. The bases of these needles break easily. Some of them break the second you try and put them through those pellets. Other ones, well, they could last a few times, but they will break on you, right? Now at the same time, what you're gonna need, what will come in extremely handy, this is a Fox tool in order to insert the needle in, right? So we're gonna take the tool, put it into the, to the on top of the pellet, or put it in the screw, and, and which is on top of the pellet, so we could pierce the pellet, or you can make your own, right? So this one is cut out over here in order to put into that same 532nd hole and put the needle in it, but. If I was to do this again, I would cut this shorter and make the line down here, okay? In fact, I might do that for another future video to show you guys. Um, what else is there? So, torque wrench for everything. Also, one more thing, I highly recommend having extra pellets with you as well. You could get them for a dollar a piece online, or you could buy a bag of 50 of them, right? Having extra pellets and extra needles, in my opinion, if you're gonna do it by hand, is it's, it's an absolute necessity. You will break needles and you never know when they're gonna break, okay? So from there, alcohol, uh, paper towels, and that's pretty much it. Let's go on to the parts needed for the job. As for parts, we're gonna need seal kits. Here we have the 50-hour seal kit, 803-00-142. Includes all the O-rings for the inside of the air can and the float fluid. And this is the full service seal kit, 200 hours, 803-00-816. Okay, we're not going to need all of them, but it has every all the seals that we are going to need. We're also going to need, for the damper body, 10 weight green. No more red, it's 10 weight green. And we will also be needing any kind of uh, shock lubricant. So I have shram butter, you could use sacolium, slick honey, so on and so forth, okay? Let's get on to the job. Before we start working on the shock, the first thing we wanna do is make sure it is completely clean, that there's no dirt anywhere, no grease, that, or no dirt really, or anything that could fall inside while we're working on it or when we're putting it back together, okay? So just make sure it's clean. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the current settings and write them down, starting off with our air pressure, so we could remember it when we are done at the end. This one is at 145 PSI. I don't think that's totally accurate, but I could be wrong, but let's put it 145 plus, let's say five, because we lose some in there, and five is the max we're gonna lose. Oh, yeah, before I do that, let's take out the air that's inside, and we do this very slowly. The slower, the better, okay? We want this to empty out from both chambers, and if we do it slowly, air will come out 
the bottom chamber to the top one. Just don't rush this. Just let it come out slowly, just like that. All right, this is actually in the locked position. I can't do anything with it. So, now, in your case, you're going to have rebound settings. This one over here, I have no idea what they were at because he was showing me that the compression knob does work, the, doesn't work, but the rebound knob does, and he had moved it, so I have no idea where it was previously. But in your case, you're going to write that down. All I could do is write down the air pressure, all right? Next up, let's start opening her up. Now, I had already removed the shock mounting hardware on both sides. On this side, it was bushing based. On this side, it was bearing based. I have two videos showing how to remove each type of shock mounting hardware out there, right? I'm not gonna do it in this video. So next, if you have them, you're better off removing them. Technically, you don't need to, but okay. So next, we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna put him in the vise. Okay. Now, I wanna remove the air can. Oh, wow, what do you know? I could do it by hand, sweet. Whoever did it before me was smart. All right. Now what we're gonna do, just to play it safe, we're gonna grab a towel, just in case there is some excess pressure in there that we're unaware of. And this will stop the air can from flying off. And there was a little bit of pressure in there, as you just heard. Whoa. More pressure than I thought. Whoa! We found out the problem. Holy cow. There you go, folks. His shaft is completely broken. And that's why none of it's working. Wow, oh, that is not going to be an easy problem to solve. I mean, at least the rod's good, but we have to get him a new shaft. Now we know what the issue is. Now this thing moves back and forth. So ultimately the big question is, what parts are salvageable and which ones aren't? So in this case, um, how should we do this? Let me clean it all up and think about it. So we obviously found the problem. The shaft is sheared off basically at the base of the threads that hold the piston assembly together. Now, I don't know how bad it is. I'm not sure how challenging it's gonna to be to take that piece of metal out. But guys, we're gonna find out. And I think I'm gonna start dismantling the damper body first. Even though I'm pretty sure a lot of pressure came out of the IFP chamber, we're gonna make 100% sure. We're gonna release all the remaining air out of there if there is any. I'm just gonna use a drill bit and a pick to take out the Delrin ball. Okay, so we're gonna take it, be very careful. Things sometimes like to walk. There we go, should be more enough. Grab our... Ah. 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 ah, give me a break. I hate these double balls, I really do. Ah. Yeah, it should be a little bit better. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we're gonna grab a little bit of paper towel and a 530 seconds, I believe. Yep. The reason for the paper towel is just in case oil mist comes out, we don't breathe it and slowly open up this port, very slowly. Feel the air coming out. Remember, there's 500 PSI in this thing. But this thing popped out on its own. That means there was a lot of air that actually made it to the other side. Okay. Let's 
Now we took this out. We got our little pellet in here. Turn it sideways and pop it out. Pellet is gone. Now let's vertically mount it. Actually, what I'm going to do first, take out these tokens for the negative chamber. I'm going to put them on the side. Now we're going to mount this guy vertically here. Actually, let me do it the other way around. And we're going to take out the bleed screw next. Take out the bleed screw, two millimeter Allen. Actually, it's so much nicer. Usually you can't get in there easily. Okay, just be careful. Still might be some air trapped in there. You know, I doubt it. There we go. Take our bleed screw. We're going to put it on the side. Get our magnet. Take out our bearing or ball. Put both the bleed screw and the ball on the magnet and just let it on the side. Now we grab our 19 millimeter. Now remember, we never want to put pressure on this bleed hole, right? So if I, if I was to open it up this way, then pressure would be on this corner and this corner. So I'm going to open it up this way. So pressure is on this corner and this corner. All right, it's going to be a good crack. Actually, a really good crack. 19 millimeter, by the way. Oh. There we go. Whoa, that was really tight, man. That was way more than, what is it supposed to be, like 20 newton meters, I think? That was way more than that. Okay. Now, this is going to be a, this is going to be completely different for you, but again, we have a problem over here, right, that we're going to try and solve. So, let's take off the, that's the piston head. Now, we're going to take off the actual piston itself. Okay. And it's damaged. Yep. Okay. So if you look at this as I spin it, it is not even. Look at the disc. The rod is bent. So we are also going to need a new rod. So we need a new shaft and we need a new lifting plate, without a doubt. The rest of this, I have to assume, is nothing wrong with it. The question is, getting this part out, uh, before we deal with that, let's empty out the, take out the IFP, and empty out the oil from it. Wow, there's no oil in this thing. I just realized there's absolutely no oil in it. All the oil's gone. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a little unexpected, guys. Next, we're going to take out our IFP. We're going to grab air. There's <laughs> literally no oil. No oil at all. I've never seen that. Not like that. Like, literally not one drop. Take air. And boom. Our IFP is out. No damage on him, so that's a really good sign. And now we really want to inspect the inside of this thing. Let's clean them out real good. Look at the walls. Hopefully there was no damage by the piston floating around because it was broken. Well, that looks good to me. I do not see, I'll inspect it deeper, but what you're looking for is any kind of blemishes, grooves, gashes, uh, any kind of damage. And right now it is all looking good. I'm gonna say that is good. That will need to get changed. Now let's work on removing. Huh. This is not gonna be fun. I got lucky enough that there was enough room on the leftover shaft or whatever part of the shaft was left over that I could attach it to a nine millimeter hole soft jaw, right? So soft jaw, nine millimeter hole, clamp it down real well. Then we're gonna grab our three nipple tool over here and take off. It would be nice if I actually had it right way. Okay. Let's take this guy all the way off. We'll put him on the side. Be careful over here. There could be shims underneath stuck on him. And there is no shim stuck on him. Good. We will leave him here. Then what we're going to do, take our um, 
tie wrap or a zip tie. We're going to take our socket over here. Oh. Okay, let's do it this way. Because obviously that's got nothing to sit on. Mm. Let's loosen them first. Let's see how tight this guy's on here. Now we're going to be careful and separate the shaft from the piston. Wow. That is so tight. There we go. Nope. I think it's still spinning. Let's try him with this soft jaw. Honestly can't tell. Yep, yep, it's working. I think it's working. This is going to be tricky now. What we're gonna do is put our tie wrap down. I should be able to separate them by hand, in theory. Hopefully the bottom's not spinning. That was on there beyond stupid tight. Now here's the gotcha. We have to collect everything as a whole so we don't lose shim stack orders. I don't feel like hunting down. And that's it, yeah. I was gonna say, where's my, <laughs> I thought this whole bolt at the bottom, all these threads, that, that whole section broke off. Okay, so that's our assembly. All right, and this is our main problem. Well, one of two main problems. So I'm gonna put that there for now so I can show him. Let's go through the shim stack and make sure nothing's broken in here. All right, so remember, stuff sticks together like real well. I'll probably separate all these and clean these just to make sure we're all good. Inspect each and every one of them. Come on. Just like that. Okay. All right, get out. They're giving me a hard time. Nope. We're good. Everything just needs a cleaning. I don't know that many shims, but we're good so far. I might take it all apart later and clean it all out well. But just keep them in order just like that so we don't forget which order they're in. And we're going to put this on the side. Well, we got our 9 millimeter here. Now we can take off our top. Before we take off our top, let's take out our bumper and take out our washer. Actually, this is a big token. Might as well take out the token. It's a huge token. And I'm willing to bet oversized. Come up this way. Come on. Why is he jamming on that one side? There we go. Come on. For crying out loud, do you believe this? All things. Come on, nearly there, nearly there. You're inching me. Millimeter at a time. There we go. Come on. Oh, fuck. Forget that. Great, my nails aren't long enough. A washer, bumper, all oh, this is going to get replaced. Now let's take off our token. Token. And then we have a seal in here. All right. We'll deal with that later and replace them. Next, we will remove the shaft from the head and make sure. All the controls are good. Remove the shaft. First, let's put some alcohol on them. Actually, I'm gonna clean this with alcohol too while I'm at it. 
gonna take our shaft, put this guy to the front, even though I know which way it's gonna go in at the end. All right. I'm gonna put them a little bit higher, make my life easier. Then we're gonna grab some heat. Come on. Should be more than enough. Grab my other torquing tool and he's spinning at the bottom. Oh, we're good. Okay. Let's see if he's aligned. There we go. Yep, facing the front. Performance series faces the front. Factory and performance elite faces the rear. So we're good. Now, let's see the condition of this guy here. Huh? This guy looks like he's in good shape. But this guy obviously is not. And our rod is not. So, but this is a cheap part. I don't think this costs all that much. And we have our seal in here, which I'm going to leave it in there for now. So next, let's make sure that the cams and the shafts in the knobs are okay. Okay, to take out the dials, we got a screw, one and a half millimeter screw here and then one and a half millimeter screw here. Do not start with this screw. We start with this screw. Okay, we're going to take it out, and then we're going to be careful. Take it all the way out. Okay. Leave that guy on the side. Then there's going to be bearing in there with a spring. There's our bearing. And our spring is still in there. All right. Let me just take this guy. Put him on here for now. Grab our bearing, pop him on the side before we lose him. There we go. Leave this guy here. That is all clean. So now what we can do is actually I'm gonna take out this oh, I forgot spray. There we go. See a spring in there, which pushes on the bearing, which gives you the clicks. Leave the eyelet there. Take out this screw. And we inspect. We're going to have to take him out all the way. Pop him out. And pop the shaft out. Dirty, gritty, definitely some wear marks, but it doesn't look like the end of the world. Looks like this guy is more than usable. All right. He's good. Nothing wrong with him. Perfect. I like to hear that. I like to hear that a lot. So, from what it looks like, we are going to need a minimum of two parts, possibly three to play it safe. And the two parts are, we are going to need... New shaft, because, well, I ain't welding this together, that's for sure. Um, a new lifting rod. The shims on top. Let's test it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the rod, put on a flat shaft. Don't compress it too hard, just enough to be able to take off this screw on top. I don't know if you can see that. All right, just be careful. There's two shims and a plate. Sort of exactly the way a Dremel head works. All right, so. 
we want to do is make sure that these are straight, in particular this one. Actually, all three of them. All right, so. Now this guy we could test. Yep, he's definitely warped. Definitely warped. Yep, you can see him right there as I spin him. So this guy needs to get replaced and we could buy just this guy and we could save the two uh, shims on top. Folks, that's as far as I could take it for now. I need to order some parts for him. Those are actually pretty low cost parts so it's not gonna be all that bad. And uh, then we will rebuild the entire shock. All right, I will be back. And we're back. So once again, the shock came to me broken. The knobs didn't work and it was stuck in the locked position, right? Le oil was coming out of the knobs as well. We opened it up and we discovered that the main culprit here, the main shaft, it literally broke off its tip. So that part absolutely needs to get replaced. Now, we also found out that the lifting rod is bent or warped. This needs to get replaced. At the same time, I noticed that the bearing assembly or air cam piston, the bushing on the inside, the coating has been really chewed up. So I'm gonna replace that part as well since it's not all that expensive. I also decided that I'm gonna replace the camshaft since even though it looks okay, there's a little bit of wear, but that's insignificant, but I'm not entirely sure if this has a bend or not. And it was a very cheap part. So I figured, meh, why not change it out? I'm also gonna be changing out the locking plate this one, I cannot really tell if it's flat or not. So, and this was cheap enough. I want to say like a couple of bucks. So I'm going to be changing that out as well. I decided to change out the damper body. It does have a dent. The inside looks good to me. Actually, I don't see any reason for the inside to be changed, but I figured, you know what? We've come this far just in case. Let's just change it out. It wasn't all that. This was probably the most expensive part to change. The other one was literally uh, two bucks here, five bucks there. So not all that expensive. And at the same time, even though I'm pretty sure this is actually in good condition, there are some scratches and marring at the bottom over here. So I figured, meh, why not change this out? This again was cheap enough, all right? So I'm gonna be putting all this back together as I would a service video, even though the brand new parts will come with the seals. I'll just go through the job as I would in a regular service video, all right? So now the only thing we need is the parts and with the power of Hollywood, boom, there's our parts. Now, before we continue with this job, guys, if you like this video, do me a favor, click the like button below, right? They say, they say that it actually helps out the channel. I don't know, I have no idea if it really does, but if you could like hit the like button, man, it would really be super appreciated, all right? So now let's get on with this job. First, we're gonna start off with the knobs. We're gonna take the two main body parts and clean them well, get all the old grease out, get any old dirt out, make sure that nothing gets in the way of the cam and the inner shafts, right? So let's clean these guys out good. Clean this guy, make sure we clean the little dimples because that's our clicks. All right, make sure we clean off the edges over here any old grease. And ultimately, if you can, if you have it to have one of these things or you, know, um, you could roll up a towel and just put it in there. Just clean the inside. We're gonna take a towel, we're gonna to roll it up anyway and try and get it in there. We don't want any dirt on the inside here, especially, right? We want this to be clean. There we go. Also get in there so we don't hear any grindy noises. Stupid hairs. Uh, just like that. Okay, this guy is good. Let's clean this guy. All right. Yeah, the controls on the Performance Series are real easy, which is nice. Nothing complex here. 
Okay. All right. So that is done. Next, I will be changing out the cam. Got my new cam here. Like I said, this was a cheaper than I thought it would be, to be honest. All right, so looks like the same one, definitely the same one. And we will be putting the new one there and the old one we will be, oh man. Anyway, we tossed it out. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna take our cam, we're gonna put it in, right? So we need some grease. Take some grease, put it on him. Take this guy, put him in, and now we are good. Next, we're gonna take our knob. We're gonna put him on, and we're gonna grab our one and a half millimeter Now, what we want to do is, if you notice, there is a dimple there. We need to get that grub screw into that dimple. All right, there we go, until he locks down. And he is not going anywhere. In fact, might be able to Put them a little bit more down on the inside. Nope. There we go. Until he's completely at the bottom, right? So there's no wiggle. Super tight. Next, let's clean the eyelet. As for the eyelet, we have a O-ring that we haven't taken out yet at the base over here, right? Let's just leave him on the side so we don't forget him. Now we're gonna clean the inside and the inside where the controls go into plus where the spring goes into, right? Grab a little alcohol, pour them in there. Let's clean them out well. And the reason we wanna clean them out real well is we don't know if there's any little metal debris in here based off the shock cracking. And there were definitely metal shards, very small ones that I'd already cleaned out before. We just want to be extra sure on this. All right, so one of these guys come in handy. So you tuck them all the way to the back, spin them around. Take them out. Do the other side. One more time. All the way to the back, spin them around. See, there you go, metal shard right there. In fact, I'm gonna clean him again. Let's make sure there's absolutely no metal in here. Let's do it this way. Fill him up and then empty him out. In fact, that's probably another one right there. Yep. Let's do it again. Okay. Put this guy in. Sink him all the way to the back. Clean him out. All right. And clean the threads out. Hard to tell, there are little black dots. I don't know if it's metal. Let's do that one more time. Better safe than sorry. Last thing we want is little metal bits tearing apart the inside. Even though technically it would be hard for them to get out of this area to the bottom. You never know. All right, let's do it one more time. Set this guy in. All 
All right. One more area to clean. Grab a little pinpoint spot. And put them inside where the spring goes into. Clean that area. There we go. Clean the outside. Now let's clean the base well and the threads. And we are done with our eyelet. And now it's time to assemble. Before we assemble, I opened up the 200 hour seal kit right over here. I aligned all the O-rings by size. Just make sure you do not lose your Delrin ball. Okay. And we are gonna start off with the eyelet. Now the eyelet came with two seals, one inside the shaft over here and one inside the air can. So we're gonna start off with replacing those seals. So the first thing we wanna do is match the seals. And this one's definitely that one. So this is the new one. And this one here is that one there. And if you notice, this one's chewed up. So we definitely need to replace that one. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is replace this guy first. Grab a little butter, slicoleum, whatever you want. Dynamic grease, I mean, Really not dynamic grease for these guys, but okay. And this guy's gonna go in first and he goes into the base. You can see the seat at the bottom over there, right? So what we're gonna do, put them sideways like this. We're gonna try and sink them in one side. There we go, sitting in the seat. And then we're gonna try and pop the rest down. So we're gonna use this side. Nearly there. Nearly there. And there we go. All right. Look in the hole, make sure he's not sticking out. We are sitting in there. Next, we're gonna take the larger one, put some grease on him, and we're gonna pop him in his seat, which is right over at the bottom over here. Now just be careful with this guy. This guy sometimes he could just want to flop around and be wavy, but just make sure you put them in the right seat. Mm, see what I mean by he likes to flop around? I stick it to my fingers, great. Mm. There we go. Okay. Get in, get in, get in. Nearly there. And it's always this last little bit that causes trouble. And come on, pop in there. Boom, boop, nearly had him. Yep, there we go. So he is in. Next, the knobs. Now, before we put the knobs in, let's just give him a little cleaning. Clean the ball, make sure there's no grit on him. Clean the spring and clean the top part of this head. Try and make sure you clean the inside of the hole. Make sure he's not clogged, right? Where the one and a half millimeter head goes in. Or one and a half millimeter Allen. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is start off by taking a little bit of grease, putting them in a the hole where the spring goes in. Don't need much just to, enough to hold the spring. I'm gonna take the spring, we're gonna put them in, just like that. Before I install the actual knob, let me answer a question that I've been asked many times. Can I remove and install the knobs when the shock is completely put together? And the answer is technically yes, you can, although it can prove to be pretty challenging, okay? so. Here's your metering rod, and the whole goal is that your rebound rod needs to touch the metering rod, okay, over here, All right? So it's gonna be something like that. So this is your compression rod, this is gonna push down the compression, and ultimately the red part here, that's your rebound, and it's gonna, this is its own cam over here, and it's gonna, well, every click, well, 
let the rebound go up and down, right? Now, this technically sticks out from the eyelet on the inside. Not by much, but it sticks out. Now, if you notice with the eyelet, there's only one way to put it in. This isn't round, this is oblong, okay? And that's actually a good thing. So, for a performance series, for instance, even though we're gonna officially put this together later, I'm just showing you right now, this bearing part over here would face the front of the shock, okay? Or at least the knobs, okay? So it'll stick out something like that. So the tricky part is getting the camshaft around that rebound part of the metering rod in order to get it out and get it in. So you will have to absolutely finagle it just like that in order to get it in, okay? And the same goes for getting it out. It won't be just a slip in and slip out. You will absolutely have to move it around. Now, the nice thing is the fact that this is shaped and it's not perfectly round is that you won't really spin it all that much. It won't spin around and dislodge from or move from its, its position, which is a good thing. But it can prove to be pretty challenging to actually do this. Now, one thing I absolutely recommend if you are gonna do this, remove the air from the IFP chamber because there will be pressure pushing up, right? And ultimately that's only gonna make your life more difficult because you gotta remember in here, you have the metering rod and it's gonna be pressure that's gonna be holding it up essentially, right? So that's gonna be even more difficult to get the knob out and put the knob in, okay? So I would definitely do that. So is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Do I recommend it? Not really, because I mean, it's pretty easy to get this job. Once you get used to this shock, it's really easy to work on guys, right? You'll be able to put this together in no time flat. Like I said, if it wasn't for that stupid pellet based, I should say IFP chamber, this would be really easy shock to work on. So again, it can be done for both DPS factory, performance elite and regular performance versions of this shock. Now for the nude, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging because the nude has two parts to the cam, right? Because there's a pin at the end of the head that the cam activates, the second part of the cam activates. So that's gonna be more challenging and I highly recommend you don't try it on the nude. Can be done technically, but it's gonna be frustrating if you don't get lucky off your first couple of shots. Chances are, it will separate, the cam itself will separate if it gets stuck in any single which way or form, which means you're gonna have to take it out again and it's just gonna be a pain in the butt, right? So just an FYI on that one. Technically, can it be done? Yes, it can be done. Sometimes it'll be easy, other times it'll be more challenging, all right? So hopefully that answers that one. So back to our assembly, again, we put our, bear, well, now I'm gonna need a little bit more grease to hold our bearing since I just did all that display. I don't know, make some grease. Get in there. There we go. Wipe it off the edge, take the bearing, put the bearing in. Make sure it's stuck in there good. All right, now I'm gonna take a little bit of grease. Again, since some of it wiped off, I'm gonna put it on the cams. All right. Now, you have this little metal bar. Make sure that metal bar is at the bottom as we put this in. Okay, and then we're gonna take our screw. We're gonna put them in. We're gonna put them in all the way down. Is that the end? Now I'm gonna quarter turn him back out. One quarter turn, just like that. And we have full free movement. There we go. Now it's fully locked position. And this is the fully open position. So we're good. I'm gonna leave it a fully open for now, All right? And our eyelet is done. Next, let's work on the shafts. So again, there was a few parts that I was gonna replace. I absolutely needed to replace the shaft. I absolutely needed to replace the compression rod. And I, and I decided to replace the lifting plate or the compression plate and the metering rod. All right, so out with the old in with the new, actually on this one over here, I'm gonna need to take the bearing off of this one and put it on this one. Why they didn't just include the bearing is beyond me. Now, this guy here, there's an etching. Let's leave the etching up. There's a reason for that etching. And we're gonna take the metering rod, our metering rod, the compression rod and put them on the side. So first let's start off with assembling this component here. We're gonna take our screw. 
we're going to take the small shim, put them first, take the larger shim, put them second. Now, there's an etching. Make sure the etching, see the other side has no etching, faces the screw. Okay, just like that. Then we're going to take this guy, we're going to screw him in. Be careful you don't strip him. Okay, and he does not need to be tight at all. Number six Torx. And this screw needs three Newton meters, so strong finger tight. Okay, and that's it. Hold him down tight, put him in, and we are done. Our lifting plate is complete. So again, for the metering rod, I need to remove this bearing or this ball and put it into the new metering rod. I've never done this before, and I have no idea how to remove that ball. The only thing I could think of is make sure you have a magnet. It is a steel ball and the rod itself is aluminum, right? So make sure you have a magnet, strong magnet preferred. Maybe grab a pick and try and get it out. I'm not sure. And if anybody knows of a surefire way to do this, please leave it in the comment section. Because why Fox didn't include the ball in the new one is just ridiculous. I mean, guys, charge me an extra few bucks. I don't even care. I mean, I need the ball to make this work. If anybody's going to order this, they're going to need the ball with it. Instead of having to go through this. So, whether it's a service guy or just a regular person at home, this ball does not come out easy. And there's nothing underneath that I could poke it out with, right? So there's no place underneath that I could poke it out with. My only recommendation is just make sure you have a magnet no matter what you do, just in case it flies out. Okay, this is obviously going to prove to be somewhat challenging. I mean, somehow I got to stretch open that hole that it's in. If I could crimp him enough where he squeezes him out of his seat. If I crush the aluminum enough to push him out, that might work out real good. Like I said, I can't think of another way to get this ball out. Pick doesn't want to work. It's gonna have to be brute force. This seems to be squishing him. Again, if I could squish him from the bottom out. Oop, is that it? I think I got him. Yep, nope, yep, there he is. Okay guys, unless anybody knows of a better way to get that ball. Oh my God, where'd he go? There he is. Whew. Make sure you have a magnet. So he's obviously a steel ball. Make sure you have a magnet. Now, again, what seemed to work is crimp right at the base. And again, this is just a seat, a perfect seat for the ball. Crimp at the base and it'll pop the ball out. That's all I could think of because a fine, fine pick and a strong, fine pick didn't seem to work. So this guy, well, he's garbage for sure now. So now the big question becomes putting them in. Let's see if this makes the most sense. Put them on a magnet, find a seat, squish them in. There we go, boom. Guys, we solved it. Hail the conquering heroes. Done, we have our new metering rod and the bearing is, the ball is in it. Again, crimper, grab a crimper, go underneath the ball and the metal will squish, the aluminum will squish, it'll pop the ball out. Make sure you have a magnet. You do not want to lose that ball. So we're going to need the seals. Now, this small seal goes inside the metering rod. This second to smallest seal goes inside the shaft. All right. Now, there's to remove the seals, as you'll see in some of my other videos, you grab a needle, you grab the seal, you pop it out, and then you could use the metering rod to pop it out of the shaft, or you could use the compression rod to pop it out of the metering rod when the seal is dislodged, right? So in this case, we need to just put the seals back in so we won't need the needle. What comes in handy is 
a wooden skewer, little skewer, right? So first let's start off with this guy here. So the goal over here is we want to put them in vertically till about here, okay? Because the seat is literally right about there. And we're going to try and tuck in one side, and then we're going to use the metering rod to fit them into his seat, okay? So we're going to start off, we're going to get a little bit of grease. We're going to put some grease on him. All right. Now, again, what we're going to do is put them in sideways. Now, this is where this guy comes in handy. Grab the base and tuck him down. He gets good grip on this rubber without damaging him, right? Just make sure he's below the initial seat. Yeah. There we go. Although I went too far down. So let's tuck him up a bit. Okay. Now what we are going to do grab a pick and we're going to try and grab the edge and tuck it into the seat and you will feel it roll in there am I in? yep i think i'm in yep i'm in one side right now that i'm in one side i can take my metering rod and push the whole seal in if he fell in his seat don't put too much pressure he should just slip in there nicely and there he goes. Done. Actually, I got just that one section over here on top. And now he is in. All right, so that takes care of that side there, or that seal there. Our next seal goes at the top over here, and he sits right below here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a little bit of grease on the seal. Now this guy's small and stiff. Now we're going to take him, try and squish him, put him inside. Mm. Hold on. Try and squish him sideways just like this. A little tricky and slippery when you got grease on him. Plus, my gloves are all ripped, so it's not making it any easier. I mean, Come on. Rip gloves are definitely not making this easy. Okay. There we go. Nope. Come on, man. Give me a break. I don't think I've ever had... Get rid of this glove. Sorry, guys. Change them out. Basically, what we need to do is squish them. Just like that. Tuck them in. Stick them down. There we go. All right, now put them just below. Again, you'll feel them in a seat. And one side did not pop in. There he goes. You can literally feel them pop in there basically, right? Now we're gonna take our metering rod and we should be able to tuck him in. Boom, there we go. He is in. A lot easier without with gloves that don't have tears in them all right so now basically what we're going to do take some grease we're going to put it on the metering rod we're going to take our metering rod and pop them in this might be a little bit stiff at first and done we are ready to finish up the eyelet. And we're back. Now we're gonna connect the shaft to the eyelet, right? And again, like I mentioned before, as far as taking out and putting the knobs in while it is fully assembled, technically can be done, can prove to be a bit of a challenge. When you take it out, you see exactly what you're doing, right? So you can see the red part of the dial, the rebound part is in the back, and you want this ball to touch that part right there, for instance, right? So again, with performance series shocks, usually the, the ball faces the knobs. With the performance elite and the factory, it's the other way. It faces away from the knobs or the back, if you want to call this the front and the back, all right? So first, what we want to do is make sure that our threads are completely clear of grease or free of grease. And we're going to do that to the inside thread as well. All right. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take Loctite Red. 
Ow. I cut my hand trimming or cutting out a branch from a trail. My hand, my thumb. It hurts. Okay, we are going to put a good coat on it right there. Don't go too crazy. All right. So now we want to make sure this sticks out a little bit. And like we said, for the performance, we are going to put him towards the dial, right? So we take him, we sink him in. We know that he's touching right there. And then we turn him. All right. Then we put him in a nine millimeter hole. All right. Then you could use whatever tool you used to remove the eyelet from the shaft. I'm just going to use this one here. Okay, and then torque wrench, 9.6 newton meters, which I preset them already, right? Yep, 9.6 newton meters. Huh. Oh. I thought it was small stuff that gives me headaches. Okay, 90 degree angle. Put them all the way in, and until we get to 9.6, and this guy needs to be tighter. 9.6 on the nose. Our shaft is installed. Now we assemble it. I attached the eyelet to a flat soft jaw. Okay, so first we're gonna start off. I'm gonna put in the washer. Then we're gonna change out the bumper. Up with the old bumper. In with the new bumper. Okay. I'm not gonna put in the token because I am not convinced that he needs a token this large. All right, this seems way excessive for his size and weight and the trails that we ride around here. So I'm gonna leave this out for now. But ultimately, what I will do is disassemble and I would tell you typically not to disassemble this, right? Take everything apart because it's easy to lose track as far as your shim order. But considering that I already found metal shavings in the eyelet and that it was the base of the shaft that attaches to this threading over here that cracked off, my guess is that there's potential there will be metal shavings in here. So I will separate everything out. We're gonna be very careful over here. And we're gonna use this tie wrap or zip tie, whatever you're using to your advantage, okay? So, this is the part that screws to the shaft, this is the top, all right? So we're gonna start from this part over here. Now what we're gonna do is make sure that this side can't slip out in any single which way or form, all right? And one by one, what we're gonna do is take apart the assembly and put everything in order. But again, be very careful. It looks, these things are so fine and they stick together so tight, you could mix things up without realizing, right? So we're gonna take this guy, that's the top part. We're gonna put him down. Then we have a large shim and he is the only large shim. And make sure you double test him. We're gonna put him down. And already I see something on the edge of that. So then we have a spacer shim. Make sure he's the only one. There's more spacer, sh spacer shims here. In fact, there's at least two, if not potentially three. And again, separate them here first before you take them off. And this guy here is probably just a wider one. He is not two. Yep, he's probably a, two milli a 0.2 millimeter, and this guy's probably a 0.1. So take this guy, put him next. Then we take this guy, right? And we are sure that he is just one. Okay, now we got our compression shims. Technically, this is our compression stack. I guarantee you that this is two shims here, even though he looks as one. Yep, I was right. Like I said, it's these things stick together. They vacuum to each other. Three shims. There you go, guys. Like I said, it's very, very deceiving. Make sure you split them up in order to make sure you put them back together in the right order. Three, Four. See what I mean? There you go. I bet you that's a metal shaving right there. Five. 
five. Okay, now let's separate this side. Make sure, oh, shim's stuck underneath, right? So again, those are our rebound shims. Let's try and separate them from the piston. Come on. There we go. Okay, now this guy faces up. And we will do our rebound shims. Let's make sure he, see what I mean? It looked like there was one and there might actually be more. And these are different sizes. So we wanna make sure that we put these in the, exactly in the order. We put them back in the exact order that we took them out. Double check them, triple check them, make sure there's nothing stuck to each other. Rebound. Make sure nothing stuck to each other. Rebound. Spacer. And we got one more spacer. Right there, if not two more spacers. Come on. I don't know. Boy, that guy's stuck on there real good. Okay. He's obviously going to need. Two more spacers. Yep. See what I mean? They vacuum onto each other. Okay, let's do this. Use gravity to your advantage. And come on. There we go. Come on. Okay. All right, so now again, this is two spacers here, even though it seems like it might be one. Sometimes it might seem like it's one, it turns out to be three. Be very careful if, when you do this. And the only reason I'm doing it in this case is because of potential metal shavings, right? So this guy goes here. This guy goes after him. Then, be careful in the back over here, we got more spacers, right? So, and these guys are fixed size, not adjustable. Come on. Boy. Okay, he obviously doesn't want to come off. Let me grab a finer. Oh. He came out, but this guy here, okay, there we go. Okay, so again, now we know we have no spacers on either, see what I mean? No spacers on either side, we're good. So this guy goes like that. And then we have this one shim, spacer shim, he goes next. And we got a spacer shim. Where'd he fall? Oh. Spacer shim. Another spacer shim. In fact, this might be two of them. Again, double check them on the wire. Could be two, or he could be a thick one. This guy is a thick one. I can see it with my eyes. So he's a thicker one. Probably two millimeter, if not a 0.3. And we have, and I wrote a new glove again. Great. Come on. There we go. And we have what seems like two more, but it could be three more. Because like I said, these things really stick to each other, right? So we got this. We got that. And this is only one. Yes, it is. And then we have this. All right. Make them metal. And that is our shim assembly for this shock. This came off a of Yeti 115. This assembly will be different than yours, right? I mean, there's many different shim assemblies for DPS shocks, basically. So I'm not gonna measure it out for you because chances are it won't be for your shock. So, or at least for your bike, all right? So what I am gonna do is clean all this, make sure that there's no bits on it, no metal shavings on it based off the damage that was in there before, 
and uh, I will be back when I'm done. Yeah, I cleaned everything out, right? Everything's in order, starting from bottom to the top, all right? Actually, technically, I should turn that upside down. Starting from the bottom to the top. If you're gonna do this, make sure that you spray alcohol. What I did is I took a little plastic container and I sprayed alcohol like crazy on these parts because little metal shards did come out of this one in particular without a doubt there was quite a surprising amount i'd say maybe six seven little pieces in there that's not good right so we definitely don't want any of them and we don't want them stuck in these little holes right so ultimately i just sprayed them down real good and just let them drip now we're going to put it all back together so again this was the top and it ends at this part here at that guy right so we're going to take this guy first flat part we're going to put them in Okay, put them to the end, and then let's just bend them up so he doesn't slip off the other side. Okay, then we're going to put our shims, starting with this guy, and this guy. Then we take our spacer shim, next spacer shim, take this big shim. Put them all inside, and then we're going to take our bolt, put him through, come on, come on, there we go, okay, now everything says, well, we're going to make them sit nicely, there you go, okay, then we take our rebound shims, so spacer, spacer, mine, oh, I am in frame, spacer, spacer, and again, your shim stack might look completely different than this one, right? So we're gonna take these all guy, all these guys, put them in, careful with them, all the way to the base. Okay, then the the the, the flat side on the outside, the depress the depressed the well anyway, this side on the inside. Put this guy through. Then we start with our compression shims. One. Two, three, spacer, 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 there we go. Last shim and flat part out, this part in, facing the shims. Stack them all together, wiggle them all around, make sure it's all set. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, tie them back up. So we know he's ready to be installed. Next, we finish up the bearing assembly. Now, this one's brand new and this one does come with the seals, right? Actually, my bad, this is the old one. I didn't swap it out, my bad. I knew something looked wrong. Here's the new one. I was gonna say, this white ring is too dark. So here's the replacement. Toss this guy out. So again, it's got a brand new ring inside. Well, it's got all new seals basically, but I'm still gonna swap them out, why not? All right, okay. First, we're gonna start off with taking the inner seal and they didn't put any grease in here, really. I like putting a lot of grease behind this guy. So we're gonna go inside and we're just gonna pop out this guy here. Just go underneath him. He's really, really stiff, which is actually a good, come on. Don't give me a hard time, get underneath, there we go. And we're gonna pop him out. There we go, Juan. And second one on the inside, the 50 hour we will do later. Now we're gonna swap them out. That's the old, this is the new, this is the old, and this is the new. Wait a second. I don't know why sometimes my eyes place tricks on me, right? 
So what I like doing over here, grabbing a good dollop of grease and putting it in the seat on the inside all the way around. All right. And grab some grease, or at least the remainder of this grease. We could put them on this guy here. And then squirt, this guy could be stiff, squish him just like that, pinch him. Oh, why you give me a fuck at that? Okay, just stick them in there. Just like that. Try and get them on one side. All right. Did he just pop out? He did pop out. Great. Oh. Oh, for crying out loud. That's why these seals today are giving me a tough time. So. Pop this guy in, just like that, into his seat. Make sure he sits in there. There we go. Okay, and shove him in the other side, just like this. And there he goes. He is in. And we have a lot of grease behind him, which is good. I'm gonna take the remainder of the grease. Put him on this guy in here. I'm going to put him at the base. Make sure he fully sits in the base. There he goes. Okay. And now, just put a little bit on the shaft over here. We're going to take the whole thing. Make sure he's sitting flat. There he goes. It's going to be a little bit stiff, but he will fit in. All right, grab a little bit of paper towel. You definitely want to clean the threads over here. All right. Next, the piston. So now we got our piston assembly in our hands. Let's untwist it. Okay. What we are going to do is be careful here. We're going to take off this top cap here, right? Then, what we're going to do is make sure that this is all sitting flush. Okay, just like that. All right, straighten this guy out, tuck him in to the hole while holding him. Then, we're just going to let it all drop and make sure that everything aligns and sits. Come on. Oh, great. Come on. There we go. So we want them like that where the threads go inside. And then we're gonna turn them by hand first, just to make sure he threads in nicely. Okay. Then we're gonna take our thin edge socket, put him in, screw the rest down by hand first, okay, take him out, make sure all your shims are in, in place, then take our torque wrench, 6.8 newton meters, Wow, what's going on here? Okay. Put him in. And... Six point eight six. Well, with intolerances. Make sure there's no shim stuck at the bottom. Okay. We're all good there. I'm going to grab... This last part, screw them in by hand. Then we grab our nipple tool. Okay, now this guy is only 2.5 newton meters. Oops, two, three, four, five. 
Oops. There we go. Point five one. All right. Next, let's change out the Teflon ring. Change the Teflon ring. We're gonna grab a flat pick. Go underneath it. Come on. Come on. There we go. There you go, pop them out. Now, look at the inside, because there's two different rings, right? This one has a beveled edge, and the bevel goes on the bottom, right? So, we have one that has a beveled edge, and one that is perfectly flat. So this one has a beveled edge. Now, what I'm gonna do is make sure that that is clean of any potential debris or metal filings. All right, so again, beveled edge goes down. Now we're gonna try and do this as evenly as possible. We don't wanna stretch, over stretch them, right? So just take them and just fit them in as evenly as possible without over stretching them. This is gonna be a little bit tight. And there we go, oh boy. That's a little bit overstretched. That could be problematic later, but we will fix them. Okay, we will make sure he fits in the tube before we close it up for good. You will shrink into place, sort of. You could push them into place basically, right? So just give him a couple of good squeezes like that and he'll form into place. So this one's garbage. Now, we could take our lifting rod. We put them in, snap them in, test them and we are going to put a gauge on them to make sure that we're with intolerances considering everything that we just went through to make sure we're with intolerances we're going to put them into a fully closed position so this is fully open this is fully closed we're going to press him all the way down okay then we're going to take our gauge we're going to put him on all right and there we go, make sure he's sitting evenly. Dial the gauge to where he's at zero. And ultimately, for a regular lever like this, we wanna make sure we're within 0.03 to 0.47 inches, or 0.77 to 1.19 millimeters. For a remote version of this shock, you're gonna to need to be 0.072 to 0 0.09 inches or 1.83 to 229 2.29 millimeters right so now we're going to go from the fully closed to the firm and i am at perfect i'm just under 0.47 i'm uh point i'm 0 0.044 so we are within spec according to fox Next, let's set the IFP and close her up. Before we set the IFP, we need to change the O-ring. All right, that's the old one. And this is obviously the new one. Now let's make sure the seat is clear. Or clean. Grab a little bit of grease, put it on the O-ring. some grease inside the seat. And put the O-ring in. Come on. Come on. There we go. All right. Now, we need to set the IFP to a certain depth. It's different for each different size of shock, right? The flat part goes in. This part over here stays up so we could press it in. Now, as far as the actual depth, here is a chart that will tell you for your particular shock what depth it needs to be. This is a 1.90 by 45. 
and ultimately it is telling me I need to be 2.51 inches or that comes out to 54.61 millimeters, all right? So what I've done, technically this was already preset from another shock I did, is I take my caliper and use my Fox, I love, I like this Fox IFP depth tool. It's a great tool. It's a great design, I think. Make sure that everything aligns. You want both sides, this side and this side to touch like it does. It touches perfectly. Okay. Now, before I put them in, I'm going to grab a little bit of grease and just line the inside of the damper body. Then we're going to put this guy in just a little bit at first by hand. Just use your thumb, press them in. And now with this tool, the reason I like it, I could just sink them in without worrying about overshooting. Boom, done. I'm at the depth I need to be. Before we close them up, we need to grab our pellet, right? Pellet has a flat side, it has a beveled side, beveled side goes in. Okay, then we're gonna grab, sink him in with our 530 seconds. We're gonna grab our pellet retaining screw, 530 seconds Allen and just snug him down, right? This way we can fill him up with the oil and the IFP won't move. Next, we put this guy in the, uh, it really doesn't matter which way you position this guy. I'm just gonna position him this way because if memory serves me correct, if I position him this way, the bleed screw will end up towards me, right? So. I'm gonna put them in and next we fill them up with oil. Before we close them up, let's make sure we have everything in order. For starters, 10 weight green oil, right? Keep a towel, I have a towel where we could wrap around because oil will wanna come out, right? So might as well try and catch it. There it is, just in case oil falls out. Now, have something rubbery so you could tap, right? To try and get bubbles out. Let's make sure this guy's screwed down, get there, tightened down real good. Have your 19 millimeter either wrench, Nipex, or whatever it is, crow's foot. And if you don't have any of those, just a crow's foot is perfect. Make sure you have your torque wrench preset to 27 Newton meters, okay? Your ball, bleed screw, and your 5 64ths. All right, so first what we're gonna do, I think this is a new one, yes it is, is, take this guy, Bump it to the top with oil. Okay. Then let's tap them a little bit just to make sure there's no air bubbles. Make sure he's down tight. He's looking good. Actually, I don't need him anymore. We got more than enough sitting inside this thing. Put them on the side. And let's fill them to the top. Let's swipe them off. Get any air bubbles from the top out and fill them up again to the top. All right. Now we got that part done. So we're going to take the bearing assembly. We're going to pick it all the way up, right? We're all the way in the open position now, right? Now what I like doing is Take your finger, put it on the bleed hole. For these, for this particular shock, I find this works pretty good. And we're gonna put oil inside. All right, and cover the whole thing. All right. Okay, then what we wanna do is, when we go to put them in, we wanna roll him in right we want to roll them tuck them and then screw him down okay so that's what we're going to do real quick one shot one two three go we're going to take them we're going to roll them in tuck them down and then screw him in air will come out of the bleed port uh, oil will come out of the bleed port we will grab our make sure you know where your bleed hole is although at this point it doesn't really matter we're going to screw this guy down all right, slowly let the oil come out. Now, before we torque them down for good, make sure you know exactly where your bleed hole is, and it is here. 
So what I'm going to do is torque them from this way down to 27 newton meters. Twenty-seven point two, perfect. Then we're going to take our ball. I know my bleed holes right there. We're going to take our bleed screw. This guy could be a little bit tricky. That's why I like Rock Shock's bleed screw angled solution much better than this. So much easier. I don't know. Okay, I think I got them. Yep. Now I'm going to take this guy, screw him all the way down. Fox, angle your bleed screws or your bleed holes. So much nicer than this. And finger tight, right? Don't go over tight. Take off any remaining grease, I mean oil. Clean them up good. Don't compress them. Make sure not to compress them. Next, we fill them up with air. To fill the IFP chamber, we have two options. We could go with a nitrogen system or you could go with a hand pump, right? Now, I'm gonna create a whole separate video just for filling up a DPS with a hand pump only on that. I don't wanna add it here because it's gonna make the video too long. It's already a long video, right? But I, what I will say in this video, if you do the hand pump option, I absolutely recommend without a doubt get extra syringes right these plastic ones are weak and they break at any time and even the metal hub ones which technically are better than the plastic ones well they could break as well they could bend and break as well right so absolutely make sure you have at least five of these on hand you could buy them individually they're not all that expensive and they're gonna break on you. There's no getting around it, right? I would also recommend buying extra pellets. You could buy these individually for a dollar each or you could buy them in a pack of 50 like, like Fox sells them, right? That's absolutely needed in my opinion to fill up a DPS shock or any Fox shock that has pellets for the IFP chamber, okay? I'm gonna use the nitrogen, nitrogen system because I wanna get this out of the way. This video's already too long. So, in the nitrogen system, I need to take out the cap and I'm gonna screw on, be very careful here, I'm gonna screw on the tool in order to help me tighten it down. All right, so that is screwed on. Now, I've already loaded the system up to 500 PSI. So next what I'm gonna do is put in the shock, or at least the screw. Make sure this is the screw is down tight. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back about an eighth of a turn. All right, now what I'm gonna do is press the button, see if I could sink in. There we go, the needle's in. Let me tighten a little bit. All right, and now I'm gonna hit my lever and I'm gonna look for 500 psi on the dial. All right, never look at the gauge with your face, do it from an angle just in case it pops out. All right, nearly at 500. And we are exactly at 500. All right, now I'm gonna turn this off, make sure it stays there, and it is staying there. Now I'm gonna tighten this. All right, and then I'm gonna pull this guy out. You can hear a snap, and we are done. Much easier than a hand pump, no questions asked, okay? So, now what I'm gonna do is Tighten this guy down, if I can find my tool. Five, 30 seconds, even though he's already tight, just make him super tight. And we are good. Our IFP chamber is filled, now I could test them. And we're on the dyno, fully open position. The rebound is fully closed. Totally silent. Sounds awesome, good movement. Let's put in a fully locked, Poof, not a millimeter, nothing. 
put it in the middle. Oh yeah, that's definitely harder. That's pedal position, it's a lot harder. Again, fully open. Now let's try the rebound. Hard rebound knob really to get to with these gloves. All right, come on. All right, one at a time. Okay. And it should be fully locked over there. Put in the fully open position. Oh, that's not going anywhere. Let me just make it easier for me. Open it up. Oh yeah, we are good. Rebound's working perfectly. Outstanding. That feels great. That feels super. Awesome. Now we take it home with a 50 hour service. So I opened up the seal kit, 50 hour service kit, eight o or kit 803-00.142. I separated out the air can seals and the bearing head seals, right? Or air piston seals over here, right? Then I put the tokens and that's the sag ring when we're all done. So for starters, what we're gonna do is work on the air can and clean this guy out. So first what I wanna do, actually before I pour alcohol, is we're gonna take out the Wiper, all right, old wiper, throw that out. Then we're gonna take out the quad ring or whatever comes out easier first. Usually the quad ring comes out first. Let me grab this guy here actually. Okay, well, just broke that guy, That's, doesn't matter. Just watch you don't scratch your edges. I don't know why this is being so stubborn, but there goes L quad ring. And now we take out our seals or Delrin seals. All right. All right. Now spray them with alcohol and clean them out real good. Take everything out of there. Try and get in here because that sort of sinks in and dirt gets trapped in there. And now, what we're going to do is try and clean within the seats of the seals, right? So we're going to do is bunch up some paper towel and then stick it in there. There we go. Dirt. Dart, dart, dart. Do the same thing to the wiper seat. Stick it in there. Roll it around. More dirt. Do that again. Or if you have a blunt pick like this, you can do the same thing. All right. Around. And do it for the top one or the wiper seat. All right, let's clean the inside one more time. All right, now let's clean the threads. What I do to clean threads, take your th thumbnail and just spin it. All right. I had recently done a shock where there was just a little bit of dirt in the threads and it didn't let me screw it down. So, like I said, they could be temperamental. Let's see what it looks like to be dirt on the seat over here again. And done. Done, done, done. Now let's put these guys back in there, right? So what I'm going to do is take this pillow pack, clip it a little bit. All right, I put a little bit of oil on the edge. All right, just keep this guy nice and soft. Before I put that guy in, let me put one of these guys in. So these guys could be a little bit tricky. The first one's actually easy. Put them in the second seat, right? Got two seats, one for the wiper and one for these seals. Put them in and tuck him in. 
But like I said, they could be, see what I mean? Sometimes they want to go in easy, other times they don't. There we go. All right. He is in. Now I could take my quad ring, do the same thing. We're going to put him on top of this one. All right. Use your fingers to put him in. And then try and roll them around. Use your body. Now, make sure he is not twisted. Make absolutely sure you didn't twist him putting in, and he is good. Now we're going to do this last one. More than enough grease here. And we're going to put him on top. Now this one, let's make some space. I'm going to put him on top of the quad ring, and then we're going to sink him in. There we go. Again, use your body and sink them in all the way around. And the last bit is going to be a pain in the butt, as it always is, but we will manage it. Actually, I might get lucky with this one. Come on. Ooh, so close. So close. Hmm. There we go. Make sure he's sunk in all the way. There we go. He's not all the way yet. Double check him. Make sure he's sunk in all the way. There we go. He just popped in. Sweet. Now, let's take some of that extra grease that fell inside the seat for the wiper. And then we're going to take our wiper and we're going to put them in just like that. Boom, boom, all the way around. And done. Our air can is finished. As for the air can piston, again, we're going to grab our quad ring. Pop him out. No, oh, we just popped out one of our seals or split rings. Take out our quad ring. Take out our other split ring. Done. Now let's grab a clean piece of, piece of cloth. Make sure he's all clean inside. All right. There's a couple of drops on here. Out with the old and with the new. Put a little bit of oil on the quad ring. Smear it. Make sure you do not twist them, putting them in. This one could get twisted easy without you realizing it. It's probably gonna happen to me, I bet. Nope, he popped in. He is good. All right, then we grab our split ring. Now, don't over split it, right? Try and just bring them in like this. Open them the least you need to open them. And then when he sits, because you don't want to overstretch him, make sure he sits like this. Show you on this one. Make sure he sits like this and not like that, all right? Might see something simple. Might look like something simple, but it could be overlooked. All right, this one we're going to take on this side. Just like that. All right, perfect, cool. Now we're gonna take our negative tokens. Put them in since he had two of them. I'm gonna put those back in there. Now, I'm gonna put some grease, uh, some grease, some oil from the pillow pack. On this quad ring. Okay. Then I think I need to cut them a little bit more open. Make my life easier here. I'm gonna cut them a little bit more. There we go. Now we're gonna take about half of what's left, half the pack, put it inside. Don't put too much. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Then we're going to take this guy. We're going to put him in. Be careful with him. There we go. All right. Now what we're going to do, take the rest of the pillow pack, put it on this side. All right. That's pretty much it. Now we're gonna close them all up. Grab a towel, dry towel. Now what we're gonna do is compress them until we hear air 
displace to make your life easier, right? First, it's going to be hard. There we go. That's what we're listening for. Once that air goes out, that means he's equalized and balanced. We're going to take this guy, and it should be a lot easier to screw in. Do it by hand. Do not force this in. Always by hand. All right. Let's clean them so we get more grip. You could use a strap wrench. I don't. I like being able to put them on and take them off by hand. Or at least take them off by hand. All right. Next, we take our Delrin ball, put it in the hole, press it up against the flat part of the jaw. Make sure you don't trap or touch the damper body, and we're going to crush him in there. There we go. Just like that. All right. Sag ring. All right. Now, take alcohol. Wipe off any excess grease. And... Ta-da! And there you go, folks. You just fixed a Fox Float DPS Performance Series rear shock. Knobs are working perfectly. The shock is working perfectly. And uh, can't ask for more than that, right? It wasn't all that much to actually change the parts. The, more exp the most expensive part was the damper body, which technically I didn't need to change, but I figured going through all this, let me make sure that it's actually in a good condition inside, right? So I changed anything that I thought was going to be affected, but you can do this, guys. This isn't exactly all that hard. There's no difference between servicing the shock and fixing the shock. You can open it up the same way, right? Change out whatever parts you need to change out, and that is it. And it will cost you a lot, lot less than sending it in to get fixed because they're going to charge you for the full job plus all the parts anyway. So again, it behooves you to learn this or to get used to it. This is an easy shock to work on. The only thing that sucks on this shock is that guy right there. It sucks. I would say get rock shocks in lines just for that reason, because those are super easy. They work great and ultimately much easier to service because of them having a valve as opposed to a pellet to hold it all, right? And hopefully in this video, I explained or answered the question as far as how can you work on the dials without opening up the whole shock? Technically, you can't. Do I recommend it? Eh, not really. You take a bit of risk or making your life difficult. Ultimately, you still, in my opinion, should release all the air from the IFP chamber if you do it, because again, you're gonna have pressure constantly pushing up, right? And it's gonna be constantly pushing up against that plate, even if you force the plate down. I just recommend opening it up if you need to work it. It's much easier to just guide that metering rod in there, land them on the knobs the way they should, and you're good to move forward, all right? That's pretty much it. I am gonna make a complete separate video on using needles to fill up an IFP chamber on a different shock that I'm waiting to come in. And ultimately that should help some people. Again, recommendation, have multiple pellets handy and have multiple needle heads handy. You're gonna need them, okay? So with all that being said, if you liked the video, please, Click the like button, click the subscribe button to see more videos, click the bell button, bing, 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 in order to get notified when videos get released and more videos are coming, guys, all right? Hope all is well, and we will be talking to you soon. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.